G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I'm gonna be giving you a bit of an update on what's happened in the fish room over the past week, as well as give you some handy tips that you can use in your fish room. So let's get straight into the video. So the first tank getting an update this week is this one, and it is my Neil Emperor Logos Lay Loopy tank. And this is my breeding pair. If you've been on my channel for a while now, you'll know that I purchased four of these guys pop them in this tank. This tank was a reser water reservoir tank for, my, I was using it for water changes basically, and it had what I thought algae in it. So I got as much of the algae out as I could and popped in some water change water that had Tanganyika, Reflex Salt and Buffer in it. Popped the Lay Loopy in and I also put some Albino Bristlenose in here as well to clean up the algae. Days go by and the algae situation is getting worse, it's not getting any better. And that's when I realized that it's not algae, it's, well, it's actually blue-green algae. Uh, it's kind of an incorrect term to call this stuff because it's actually a type of bacteria called cyanobacteria. And Bristol-nosed catfish do not eat bacteria, they, they eat algae. And as the bacteria is getting worse, I thought, I've got to do something about this because I've got some Lelupi fry coming up and I don't want them uh, in a tank that's very dark. The tank is dark enough. As you can see, I've also now added the pool filter sand as a substrate. Having all the rocks very, very dark green, I thought, geez, this isn't gonna be good for the fry. So I had to treat the tank. Now, you can try and siphon out all the cyanobacteria. It's pretty much almost impossible. It will come back. And you can also try to treat it with hydrogen peroxide. But considering I had very young fry in the tank, I didn't really wanna risk doing that. So I purchased a product to help me fight this battle of cyanobacteria. Now, obviously this product doesn't fix your underlying root cause of the cyanobacteria. However, it does alleviate the problem for the short term. So what I purchased is a product called ChemiClean, and it's safe to use in freshwater and marine aquariums, even on invertebrates. So I figured this was a safe product to buy and to use considering I had newly hatched fry. So I popped it in the tank. You've got to dose it uh, very carefully, obviously. It is an antibiotic and it doesn't harm your fish. So what I did was, this is a, almost a 90 litre aquarium, minus the rocks. So I underdosed a little bit for the ChemiClean, just to be sure I wasn't going to kill my uh, new breeding pair of Lay Loopy and their fry. So I popped in one and a half capped spoons that, that they could supply you a little spoon in the packet, pre-mixed in tank water, of course. Popped that in the tank. Within 24 hours, I could see large patches on the slate becoming cleaner. Uh, the algae, well, the cyanobacteria, I should say, was uh, disappearing off those rocks and it was breaking apart. And 48 hours later, they, t they say to do a 20% water change, so I did that. During that water change, I siphoned out a lot of the cyanobacteria off the slate just because I wanted it gone. And usually after a water change, it comes back within a day or two. Uh, however, it really hasn't come back since. You can see there are some cyanobacteria left on the sides of the tank on the left and the right. However, it's getting like this tendril appearance, it's getting torn apart, it seems to be tearing up. It is not growing on the rocks like it was before. So I'm winning this battle. So the reason why I've got additional aeration in this aquarium is because ChemiClean can lower your oxygen levels in the tank. So this is just running off an air pump with four outlets on it. And uh, yeah, just really beefing up the amount of oxygen I'm pumping into this aquarium. And they've been like this for about four days now. So they've been fine. Uh, I turn the additional aeration off when I'm feeding the fry just so they don't have to struggle as much against the water current to get their food. I've got about 30 fry and yeah, they're free swimming. So they're constantly being fed live microworms and baby brine shrimp and they're doing really, really well. And the next tank getting an update is this one. And a lot of you guys might recognize it by now and it is my white Altair Lampologus Calvus tank. You might guess why I'm showing you this tank once again pretty much a month after their last spawn, and that is because they've spawned for a fifth time. I can't believe it. Uh, my suspicions of t target feeding the female, specifically feeding at the back of the tank whenever I feed this fish tank, she likes to hang at the back left of the tank, and I purposely target feed her every single day, and she's now spawned for a second consecutive time, a month after I've taken fry out of the tank. So. Guys, if you really want to get into spawning your calvus or your alto lamprologus compressorceps quickly, just target feed the female as much as you can. Get her fattened up, ripened, and she will spawn regularly. Before I was target feeding the female, I was getting spawns once every three to four months. 
and now it's happening on a monthly basis. I'm so happy and uh, I just can't re reinforce that, uh, that tip for you guys. Target feed the female. And I guess that goes for any sort of cichlids really. Not only Altolamprologus calvus or Altolamprologus compressorceps. If you want to breed those cichlids frequently, I really suggest you target feed the females. I really had my suspicions that target feeding the female would work. After I lost my November spawn where I lost 95 fry, I really wanted to get her breeding again as quickly as possible and, and uh, recover from that loss. So I specifically target fed her. It is a little bit more work because you've got to you know, remove the back lid and you've got to reach right over to the back of the tank to feed her. But it is worth it guys. Like, you know, by feeding at the front of the tank, you might get three to four spawns a year with your calvus. Uh, that's what I would have been getting if I wasn't target feeding her. Now I'm probably gonna get 10 to 12 spawns per year. I really didn't expect that from Calvus. So uh, I really hope that tip helps some of you guys out there. Not only for Altolamprologus Calvus or Altolamprologus Compressorceps, but for any sort of cichlid. Target feed your females and you should be able to breed them on a regular basis. So there you have it guys, my update on what's happened in the fish room over the past week. I really hope you found those tips useful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons and even share the video if you can. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.